Plato. Sweeping down upon the underworld to smash gangland comes the friend of the unfortunate, enemy of criminals. A mysterious, all-powerful character, a problem to the police. But a crusade of the law. In reality, Dan Garrett, a rookie patrolman, loved by everyone but suspected by none of being the Blue Beetle. As the Blue Beetle, he hides behind a strange mask and a suit of impenetrable blue shade armor, flexible as silk but stronger than steel. Today's episode of The Blue Beetle is entitled, Thoroughbreds Always Come Through. Horse racing is called the sport of kings, but common people enjoy it also. Enormous sums of money are bet each year on horse races. Enormous sums of money are won and lost each year on horse races. And where enormous sums of money are involved, clever crooks will be ever scheming to divert some of that money into their dishonest hands. As our story opens, Patrolman Dan Garrett is discussing with his friend and confidant, Dr. Franz the Chemist, a recent death at a nearby racetrack and its possible ramifications. But Danny, what makes you think Buddy Winston's death was murder? Something the jockey said before he died in the hospital. Uh, what was that? He said, say goodbye to the real White Star for me. He's a thoroughbred. White Star was the name of the horse he'd been riding for some time? Yes. He's owned by the B&T stables. Buddy rode for them. Uh, is White Star a thoroughbred? If he is, he hasn't raced like one. He's been running down at Greenwood, but so far he hasn't won a race this season. In fact, he hasn't even been in the money. Everyone calls him a dog. Being in the money means coming in first, second, third, or fourth, doesn't it? That's right. And now he's being brought up here to Parkingham Racetrack. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, but tell me, Danny... Why did Buddy Winston's last words make you feel he was murdered? His body was found in that wild stallion Thunder Mike stall. Apparently, he'd been kicked in the head by the stallion. Yes, but what was he doing in the stallion stall? He had no business there. That horse belonged to the Williams stables. Oh, well, this, this horse race business is beyond me. Some horses run around in a circle, and one of them wins, and a few people win some money, and a lot of people lose some money. <laughs> Well, that's just about right, Doc. And uh, what are you going to do about Buddy Winston's death? First, get Mike Manigan and run out to the racetrack and look around. The big race is on today, isn't it? Yeah, and White Star has entered. Well, what chance has he? Many of the horses in the race are top-flight thoroughbreds, aren't they? According to the newspapers. Well, Danny, if there's something crooked going on, I know you will find it out and be in there investigating. You bet. It's my duty to uphold the law and bring every crook to justice. Uh, be careful, Danny. Be careful and... Good luck, boy. Good luck. Thanks, Doc. So long. I'm going to find out what makes White Star twinkle. As I see it, Danny, Jockey Winston knew too much about something crooked in this horse racing business and was bumped off to keep his mouth shut. That's my theory, too. Well, what do you figure he knew? Oh, some crooked work in connection with White Star. What, that dog? Say, me boy, that horse couldn't run fast enough to keep his feet warm. That's what everybody thinks. But I've got a hunch he's booked to win this race today. Oh, don't make me laugh, Danny. <laughs> he ain't been in the money this season, and against thoroughbreds like Sassafras and Blue Egret and San Simeon... <laughs> He looked like he's running backwards. <laughs> uh, just the same. I've got a hunch he'll win. Yes, but take my advice. Don't back that hunch with a real money bet. Don't worry. I don't play the races. I like to see horses run, but I don't bet on them. Well, here we are. Uh, you go get the tickets while I park the car. Okay, Mike. Gentlemen, the tickets on the right for clubhouse tickets. The pant line for grandstand. Keep moving. Have your money ready here. Two for the grandstand, please. You don't need no tickets, officer. Need man will pass you in. Oh, thanks, but I'm off duty. I prefer to buy tickets. Okay, five bucks for two. That's right. Next. 
Hey, Johnny, uh, did you get the tickets? Yeah, here we are. Let's go this way. Hey, how about a cold drink, Danny? Ah, uh, no thanks, Mike. I'm going to stroll around this paddock and see what gossip I can pick up. Okay, I'll hold a seat for you up in, the, let's see, Section C, uh, fourth row up. That'll be near the finish line. All right, Mike. Uh, I'll be back before the big race. Hello. You the jockey that's riding White Star today? Yeah, that's right. Your name's Jessup? Yeah. Mine's Garrett. Patrolman Dan Garrett. Anything wrong, officer? Oh, no, no. I'm not here to arrest anyone. I like horses, so I thought I'd come down here and look around. Oh. Is that, uh, that White Star there? Yeah, that's him. He's a beauty. Certainly is. Can he run? Like a streak. What's been holding him back? Well, I don't know. I ain't never ridden him in a race. Winston used to ride him. Oh, that's right. I suppose he gets his name from that uh, white star on his forehead. Yep. Well, good luck today. Thanks, mister. Oh, just a minute, oh. officer. Yes? Are you here in the official capacity? No, no, just shaking hands with the horses. Well, don't be talking to my jockeys or fooling around with horses before a race. Are you the owner of White Star? I represent the owners. Oh, I see. Think he'll win today? Looking for a tip? <laughs> Maybe. Well... Don't put your money on white on the star. No? Well, your jockey here never, thinks... Never mind what he thinks. He's paid to ride, not to think. I tell you to put your money on some other horse. White star isn't ready yet. New track, new jockey, I and... see. Okay. Well, goodbye, Jessup, and good luck. And uh, thanks for that tip, mister. It's a sure thing I won't bet on white star. <laughs> Well, there's Louie Gret, number one. She's a nice-looking filly. No filly will win this race. It's sassafras for my money. Yeah? What about White Star? That dog, oh, don't make me laugh. San Simeon likes the distance. Anything can happen in a mile and an eighth. Yeah? I'm taking a long shot. $2.50 to 1 on White Star ain't peanuts. If you win. In an eight horse race like this one, he ain't got a chance. He cuts up so much at the post, he may even be left. Uh, look, they're at the post. Mm, Louis Gret sure looks good. San Simeon's nervous. Kilometer don't like the number four spot. White Star's pretty steady. Stands there like a thoroughbred. Oh! What's that horse coming through next to the rail? Number seven. Rainy day. Boy, look at him come. San Simeon's dropping back. Where's my horse? Last. Look, he's moving up. He's past San Simeon. He's almost neck and neck with Rainy Day. Sassa fast first. Louis Gret second. Rainy Day third. White Star fourth at the corner. San Simeon's out of it. Look. White Star's passing Rainy Day. Well, what do you know about that? Yeah. He's moving up on Blue Egret. Yeah. Blue Egret can't stand the pace. I told you no filly would win this race. Come on, White Star. Come on, show him how. Well, I'll be. He's past Sassafras at the far turn. And he is in the lead. Boy, oh boy, a hundred bucks I win. Ah, the race ain't over yet. It is for you guys. Look at White Star coming down the stretch. Come on, White Star. Come on, baby. Kick dust in their faces. Come on, White Star, that up, baby. It's a walk away. Boy, oh boy. White Star wins by seven feet. Well, Danny, what did you think of the race? White Star certainly ran like a thoroughbred. Yeah, he sure did that. Uh, say, the bookies must have cleaned up. Why? Well, nobody was betting on White Star. All the big money was on the favorites. I have a hunch that the owners of White Star had plenty of money bet on their horse. And what makes you think that? I figured they'd be as surprised as anybody else. The man I met at the stables while I was talking to Jockey Jessup was too anxious to have me bet on some other horse. I'm suspicious of him. 
He represents the owners. Well, why didn't you tell me? I'd have placed a bet on White Star. I didn't think of it at the time. Hey, uh, you can let me off here, Mike. I'm going to drop in on Doc Franz. Okay. Well, I may have a look into this case myself. It don't smell right to me. Well, keep your eye open for the Blue Beetle. Oh, him. Ah, someday I'll hook him. If you do, let me know. I will not. Well, good night, Mike. Good night, Danny. Oh, hello. Hello, Danny. And how are the races? Oh, great. Some fine horses running. I heard some of it over the radio. White Star was a great surprise. Yes, and I can't quite figure it out. Something's wrong somewhere. Why? Well, a horse as good as White Star couldn't run as poorly as he has in the past. You can't disguise class. Wait a minute. Disguise? That's it. You got something, Danny? Almost. Say, I wonder if... No, it's fantastic. Uh, excuse me, Danny. Yes? Oh, yes, yes, he's here. Just a minute. It's for you, Danny. Uh, a young lady's voice. Oh, thanks. Hello? Yes? Who? Millie Jessup. Oh, the jockey's sister. Yes. What? Oh, I see. When did it happen? Yes, I certainly will. Where? Yes, I'll be there in 15 minutes. Goodbye. Something important, Danny? Yes, Doc, that was Jessup's sister on the phone. You know, the jockey who rode White Star? I met him today. He's been arrested on some trumped-up charge. He remembered me and asked her to call me. Afraid to call me himself. Well, do you think it has anything to do with the race this afternoon? I'm sure of it. Well, so long, Doc. I'm going down to headquarters. The Blue Beetle may fly tonight, so I'll be back later for the Blue Beetle chain armor and mask. I'll be here and have everything ready, Danny. Thanks, Doc. Goodbye. Now, tell me all about it, Miss Jessup. Well, just after the race today, when Eddie, my brother, was changing his clothes, he overheard a conversation that led him to believe that White Star was going to be shipped to another track tonight. But White Star is supposed to race in the Alice Whiteman Memorial Stakes here next Saturday. That's right. So my brother went to Mr. Gottschalk, who represents the B&T stable, and asked him about what he overheard. What did Gottschalk say? He told Eddie his ears were too big. Hmm. A little later, somebody went to the racetrack stewards and claimed that they'd been robbed of some diamond cufflinks. A search was made, and they were found in Eddie's locker. But I know he didn't do it, Mr. Garrett. I'm positive he did it. Eddie isn't that kind of a boy. Now, 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 Miss Jessup, don't get excited. I'm sure this is a frame-up to get your brother out of the way for a while. He was afraid to talk to you himself, so he asked me to. Well, that was wise. There's crooked work going on somewhere, and I'm going to find out what it is. What are you going to do? Talk it over with... Someone who will clear up this racehorse mystery. And if it's a crooked racket, he'll smash it in quick order. What is the explanation of Jockey Jessup's arrest? Why is White Star to be transported to another track? How can a losing horse be made into a thoroughbred overnight? Will Dan Garrett solve the mystery? Or will he turn the job over... To the Blue Beetle.